against your soul. So when you are living in sin, what you don't know is that the power of your soul is what you are spending from. It's a fleshly lost wages war. The other day I carried my phone tab. I was writing on my notepad. For God's sake, notepad has nothing to do with internet. But because my data was on, suddenly I clicked notepad to write. And the young lady appeared on the screen, opening her leg. I said, it was so embarrassing. What if somebody was passing? He would now say, look at apostle. <laughs> I was shocked and embarrassed at the same time. So they are forcing iniquity down your throat. Because the devil knows that the eye is a gate. The ear is a gate. The moment you see it, the brain will go to work. That is why for anyone who wants to go high, bleeding yourself of impurity must become... You're welcome to another exciting video with Apostle Mike here on Rockpo. What you just watched was a tip to what you'll be getting in this powerful video. And this is the right time to hit that share button and invite your friends and your family to join you on this powerful adventure of transformation because there are many things you will learn and you will wish your friends or your family member will also learn them with you because the bible speaking said faith cometh by hearing and hearing only by the word of god but this time around by the word of god on the lips of his servant you will be blessed i will take it from the spiritual dimension first because the spiritual is superior to the natural if you lack purity you will discover that infirmity is a body infirmity is a weight iniquity is a weight all of that will pull you down in hebrews chapter 12 verse 2 the writer was speaking and he said lay aside every weight that and sin that doth easily beset you and run the race with patience you know why many people cannot fly? They are heavy. Any equipment that wants to go high is designed to be light. Because it will need that lightness as an advantage to gain height. But you see, in the spirit, one of the heaviest weight you will carry are iniquities and attitudes or lifestyle that are not consistent with the nature of God. And so when you find many people who are gifted yet struggling, check them. There is either a sin or a weight in their lives. And so a man who wants to gain ascension in the spirit, the first thing he needs to do is to rid himself of weight. As fast as Ozenboat is, if Ozenboat is carrying this AC, I will beat him in Olympics. It will no longer matter his capacity to run, he's carrying a weight. If I'm running with Ozenboat and all of us are wearing tight, he will finish, I will still be close to the starting line. But if Osem both makes the mistake of carrying this AC, no matter how fast he is, I will put my hand in the pocket and win him. The problem now is not his lack of speed. The problem is the weight he's carrying. Many people cannot ascend because they are carrying weights of immorality. They are carrying weights of lying. They are carrying weights of iniquity. So no matter what God does to them, in them, and through them, they can never ascend. Because those weights will pull them down. He said, who shall ascend the mountains of the Lord? Who shall stand upon his holy hills? It says, him that is of a clean hands. Him that is of a pure heart. So the first credential for ascension in the realm of God is purity. In 1 Peter 2, 11, hear what Peter said. He said, dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fresh, fleshly lust, which wages war against your soul. So when you are living in sin, what you don't know is that the power of your soul is what you are spending from. It's a fleshly lost wages war. The other day I carried my phone tab. I was writing on my notepad. For God's sake, notepad has nothing to do with internet. But because my data was on, suddenly I clicked notepad to write. And the young lady appeared on the screen, opening her leg. I said, it was so embarrassing. What if somebody was passing? He would now say, look at apostle. <laughs> I was shocked. And embarrassed at the same time so they are forcing iniquity down your throat because the devil knows that the eye is a gate the ear is a gate the moment you see it the brain will go to work that is why for anyone who wants to go high bleeding yourself of impurity must become your priority see 
you will take time and outline everything that makes it impossible for you to approach God. And you will pray consciously, Lord, remove this lying. Lord, remove this immorality. Lord, remove this pornography. Because if it is there, he will forgive you, but you cannot ascend. Every time you fornicate and you ask for forgiveness, he will forgive you, but you cannot ascend. Every time you live in sin, you ask for forgiveness, God will forgive you. It's his nature. But the problem is that you can never ascend. Every time you stain yourself with iniquity, I tell you, you have wasted your future. Why do you think? See, the devil is smart. He knows these things. Hope you know that he was a cherub. He operated in the courts of God. He knows how God works. And so when you look at the world today, almost 80% of every activity in the world today is designed to suggest sin and iniquity. You think you are having fun? You are eating your life. Every young man who wants to be impactful must know how to keep his or her vessel. Because there will be many demands on your strength. There will be many demands on your mental power. There will be many demands on your life. And at all time you must be, times, you must be fresh. It's not enough to be present. You have to be fresh. You have to be your best. And for you to remain like that, purity, you cannot compromise on it. I'm telling you why many never ascend. When they come to matters of their destiny, they are so weak. They are so tired. And you are wondering, you are just 24 years old. Why are you so tired? The reason I am fresh is because I have not allowed iniquity into my chamber. Because if he enters, it will kill me. I returned on the, on the first. I flew to the United Kingdom for a conference. Landed on the second, sort things out. From the third, we had a meeting with volunteers. Fourth and fifth, we had the meeting. The next day, I had to fly to Edinburgh, Scotland. I ministered that night. The next day, I flew back to London. Minister. The next day, I flew to Aberdeen. Minister. No, I flew to Glasgow. Ministered for two nights and flew to Aberdeen. Ministered the next day. As I finished that Sunday morning, I told my wife, gather your bags. We scheduled my flight. I'm going to Nigeria. And that night, I came back to London, flew to Abuja. On Tuesday, I arrived Monday. Tuesday was Bible study. I thought on Wednesday I had to go to Benway to defend my PhD of document and I was reading because I've, I've switched from one world to another. I left the spirit world into chemistry. Nobody will ask you John 3.16 there. When I go there, I'm talking nanochemistry. And so my brain had to switch. And immediately I was able in 24 hours to internalize 248 page textbook because that was my PhD test research. And you also have to prove to them that you are adding value to humanity. Because PhD is not undergraduate. You must add something to knowledge. And in 20 minutes, I was done talking. It didn't finish. They now say, sit down. And you are facing seven professors. And they are asking you questions from everywhere in chemistry. And they expect you to answer. How can your brain function like that if you are thinking pornography? If you are thinking masturbation? How can you function? When I finish, they say, go, you can call yourself a doctor. You don't gain height until purity comes into your chamber because it has something to do with your capacity. And as I finished from there, I came back to Abuja on Thursday night because I finished around 3 p.m. I hit the road five hours, traveled to Abuja. On Friday, I had to fly to Akwaibon. I was in Akwaibon. I switched back to, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I preached there. Preach the next morning, flew back to Abuja on Saturday in the afternoon. I was in Four Square Gospel Church. And I ministered there. Sunday, I ministered. In the evening, I returned to encounter Jesus and still ministered. And you keep that schedule round the clock. I've not told you about my family life. I've not told you about my business. I've not told you about my relationship with God. Do you think global things come cheap? It will take a lot of mental power. It will draw life out of you. That's why you cannot afford to waste life on iniquity. That's why you cannot afford. He said, I looked through the window. I saw a young man void of understanding. He said he was walking the path of death because he went the way of the harlot. The moment you journey the way of iniquity, the Bible calls it the path of death because there your strength is wasted. There your life is wasted. There your energy is wasted. And so when the matters of destiny confront you, you are weak. You are helpless. You are vulnerable. And you don't know why you never ascend iniquity comes to eat you up it comes to eat you up and that's why peter said to flee from these things and so what wise men do is that they run from iniquity they don't stand to fight it they don't stand to explain they don't show that they are strong they run 
is when you have run away, you now look back. If you still see any sign, ask on mileage. It's needed for ascension. Flee from every appearance of evil. Your future depends on it. I can begin with prayer. I can begin with prophecy. I can begin with impartation. But hear me, no matter how much you pray, if there is sin in your life, you will not ascend. No matter how much prophecy is on your head, if there is sin in your life, you will not ascend. If there is pride in your life, you will not ascend. Did you not read the story of Jacob? After he was blessed, the Abrahamic blessing, he was the only person on earth carrying the Abrahamic blessing. The only person. Still God could not lift him. The angel had to wrestle him all night. This guy was already having encounters. He had the covenant on his life. He had the blessing on his life. But the angel fought him all night. When the angel saw that he cannot take away flesh, he had to break his thigh. So the guy had to lean on a staff to be a prince. Because when he was walking on his two legs, he was too proud. He was too self-centered. He was too selfish. So let's cripple him. So that as he leans on that staff, he will not depend on himself anymore. He is too full of himself. And they broke his staff, his tie, in order to bless him. If you are full of yourself, there is no way you can ascend. You will be the reason why you will go down. And these are eternal principles of scriptures. Listen, we are young people. The present and the future depends on us. We must get it right. And we take pride in prayer. You see everybody. And God is looking. You will pray. That prayer, if it starts working, the first thing we do, it will be break you. Is it not because you are young that you are marching? Hello, hello. And you are bragging that you pray for 72 hours. Pride. 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 That's why we can go nowhere. I went to a meeting somewhere. An elder, that is, this is an elder. That if should be laying hands on us and blessing us. When we came for the meeting, I came with a fellow brother for the meeting. And in his humility, he will see you, he will hug you, he will shake you. How are you, my brother? And all of that. I saw my brother. Met this elder. Ah, oh, man of God, how are you? How are you doing? <laughs> my heart skipped. Shook him, man of God. Ah. I thought the first time was a mistake. Maybe he didn't see him well. Man of God, how are you? He was laughing at Jesus Christ. I was so afraid for him. And this is what many people do and doors are shut against them. Because the Bible says, man in honor that knoweth not is like the beast of the field that perishes. When those people at the top humble themselves, it's so that they can help you. If a man is bigger than you, he knows. A man who is bigger than you, he doesn't need anybody to tell him, he knows. He's just trying to encourage you. He's just trying to help you to be comfortable. He's trying to give you an opportunity to learn so that you can grow. If you make the mistake in your foolishness to think that's your colleague, he will shut that door. You want to ascend? Sit down and tell yourself the truth. Many times, sometimes I hear myself and I say, Jesus Christ, forgive me. Did I say this thing? Did I? I was preaching somewhere in the world and I think I was trying to charge the people to, to study. I now heard myself talking how I'm intelligent, how I don't fail. When I heard it, the Holy Ghost convicted me. I said, Father, I'm sorry. I didn't know I was the one saying this thing. Oh, Lord God of mercy. Have mercy. Have mercy. I was afraid what I heard myself say. What kind of pride is this? Help me, Holy Spirit. Help me, Holy Spirit. So that you don't sell tomorrow in your today. Because when God sees that you cannot manage this little glory, he will now say, okay, in order for us to still have you in heaven, let's pause here. Because if we give you more glory, you will not come to heaven. And we don't want you to waste in, in hell. So let's just keep the little you have now. Let's manage you here until you come back home. Because if this little can enter your head like this, you have a meeting, 50 people come. You make the cameraman snap in a strategic location and you put it to say, the Lord is helping his work. If 50 people comes and you are acting like this, then 3,000 will never come. 10,000, because that one will take you to hell. Pride. That's why we never ascend. He said, who will ascend the hill of the Lord? Who will stand upon his holy mountains? He said, him that is of a clean hands, of a pure heart, who have not lifted up his soul in vanity. Because all of those things, they are vanities. If God opens our eyes and our understanding, 
we will know that they are vanities. When recently that God started giving me opportunity to meet great people, one signature I have found in their life consistently is humility, simplicity, brokenness. I now discover that this thing truly is the hand of God that lives men. I believe this video has inspired you and more than inspiration has pushed you into action. Because the scripture speaking, it says, Blessed are ye when ye do these things. The things you just listened to, blessed are you when you do them. We implore you to get to work on the messages you've just listened to. If it means repeating the message to get a point you didn't get at the cost of the message, maybe by a distraction or something, please do, as it would greatly benefit your spiritual growth. And that is what we are after in this channel and that brings us to the end of this video thank you for watching the video if you are a new subscriber welcome on board and if you are a returning subscriber thank you for coming back your presence and your view means so much to us please we urge you to share this video once again with your friends and family if you have not done so share it on whatsapp share it on on facebook share it share it on all the social media platform that you are so that somebody can get blessed through you and also um, do well to like this video comment on the video comment your thoughts comment anything you think if you if you if you if you need help questions you can just comment them down below and they will try our best to answer your questions by the help of the holy spirit and until next time keep loving the lord and stay blessed